Hello, and welcome to Theories of Psychological Counseling. This is a really fun class to teach, and so I think we're going to have a fun semester. I'm Dr. Marie Black. I will be teaching this class. Um, in terms of contacting me, the contact information, my email, my phone number is on Canvas, so look for that under the announcements. I tend to try and respond to emails within 24 to 48 hours. I tend to be very responsive to you guys. I know what being a student is like and waiting for a professor to respond. So um, I try and, and be really quick with that. I am not local to ENMU. So appointments and office hours are virtual. So just shoot me an email or a text and let me know, um, hey, I'd like to meet. I have these questions, et cetera. The textbook for this class is Theory and Practice of Counseling and Psychotherapy. I think it's a really good textbook. It's really thorough. It's got some awesome discussion questions. Um, so that's what we'll be using. This is in the, I believe the 10th edition is actually out if you want the most up-to-date version. Uh, but for the purpose of this class, we're going with the 9th edition just because there is a online version that's available at this website. Um, that way you guys can use the textbook without actually having to pay for it if you just go to this website and download it. Um, but there are, of course, hard copies. If you want the hard copy, just know that there might be some small nuances or differences in terms of, uh, you know, the 10th edition versus the 9th edition. There might be additional readings that or videos, YouTube videos, that type of thing that might be added to the course or the course content. So just be on the lookout for those and maybe small changes or um updates to the syllabus over the course of the semester. So this course is focused on foundations of counseling and theories and looking at what techniques are do we use for different theories? What are, you know, what did theorists believe? How did they come up with this theory? What was their background? And, you know, of course, looking at how does that theory approach or work with a client when a client is coming to us for counseling or therapy. Um, we've got learning outcomes. Some stuff I'll let you guys read on your own. You don't need me to read to you. You all know how to read. In terms of this class, it is asynchronous, which means we don't meet at all during the course of the semester. You do everything on your own, on your own time. Um, and so that's going to include different discussion post assignments, different papers, a presentation um, that you'll just upload to Canvas. So because we don't actually meet in person, your discussion posts basically count as your attendance. And so discussion posts are broken down kind of into two parts. One is you're going to actually post. And then the second part is you're going to comment to one of your peers. And you can see here that the word requirement for your discussion post needs to be 200 words, and then your comment to appear needs to be at least 100 words. And that's just because it needs to be something of substance, you know, something that's more than, hey, great post, you did an awesome job. Like, no, ask, a, you know, ask a thought provoking question or um, make some kind of comment that, um, you know, tells me that you read the post, but that basically keeps the conversation going. Uh, and then here's a breakdown of what your grade will be if you are under the 200 words for your discussion post, or if you're under the 100 words for your comment to appear, you'll basically start to lose points. Um, in addition, just to start to get more experience and interaction with different theories, we'll start to do some applied case blurbs a couple weeks into the semester. And so within the textbook, there's these different cases you'll be um, introduced to Stan or Gwen. For the ninth edition, I believe the textbook only has one for each chapter. So say, for example, cognitive behavioral therapy, you'll only have one case. It will either be Stan or Gwen's case. Whereas in the 10th edition, I think it's got both cases for each chapter. So if you want a little bit more variety, a few more cases, the 10th edition of the textbook will offer that and provide that as opposed to the ninth edition. The reason I say to only pick one or two questions, so at the end of the um, the case for whichever theory we're in for that week, there will be some discussion questions and you should only pick one to two discussion questions because I don't want you to try and answer like six different questions and then your answers are very vague or like yes, no. It needs to be a little bit more detailed because you know it's 200 words. 
Um, so don't spread yourself too thin, basically, with trying to answer too many questions. Just pick one or two and answer it a little bit more in depth in terms of, you know, whatever the discussion question is asking, say, how would you um, handle the Stan or Gwen's case from that specific theory, um, theory's approach. And so what you do need to be paying attention to is whatever we're, week we're in, that's the week that you should be responding in terms of Stan or Gwen's case. And this will make a little bit more sense here in a minute when we look at um, the overall course layout. Um, research article review paper. So knowing how to find research, knowing how to find good research, um, you know, something that's not like on Wikipedia is good to be able to know in general, not just within psychology. And so part of the, the purpose of this paper is for you guys to start to get some practice in terms of actually going and finding a research article, reading through it, starting to get a sense of what to look for. And so you've got some bullet points that you'll need to address in your paper regarding you know, the purpose of the study, who the participants were, what kind of questionnaires were used, what types of information or data were they looking at in terms of this research. This should be a therapy or psychology related um, article. So don't, you know, go find a, a research article that has something to do with business or that has nothing to do with psychology. You're in a psychology class, so it should have something to do with psychology. And find something that's within the last 10 years, just because anything past 10 years kind of starts to be a little dated um, for the most part, or a lot of times in terms of psychology. Um, just because, you know, by the time 10 years has gone by, much more research has been done that's probably more up to date. And then, you know, you're going to wrap that up with implications. Why would you as a therapist, why would I as a therapist care about this research? What does it have to do with uh, psychology? What does it have to do with counseling, with being a therapist or providing care to somebody? Um, and you're going to see research articles come up multiple times. So you're going to see it come up in presentations. Down here, you need to cite two research articles and tie it to your theory or your theorist. So for the presentation, you're going to use some type of platform. I don't really care what it is. PowerPoint, Prezi, Canva, Zoom. Something to record your lecture, similar to what I'm doing right now. Uh, it and you see there's some highlight here because what students have done is they've put together in the past they they'll put together say a powerpoint and then there won't they won't actually record it like well is it really a is it really a presentation if you haven't actually you know if there's no audio or video um, to go along with or or to create actually create the presentation so you do need to do some type of recording similar to what I'm doing right now and you'll see how this is broken down into different sections. Basically, you're going to pick a theory from the class uh, that could be cognitive behavioral therapy, that could be gestalt, that could be person-centered therapy, you know, pick whatever interests you the most. And then you're going to look at basically that theorist background, you know, what kind of led to them creating this theory, what types of beliefs do they have, or what is their approach in terms of human nature and, and how um, we as humans behave. That's going to impact, you know, how they came up with the theory. Um, what is the role of us as a therapist within this theory? What's the role of the client? How does the theory help the client move towards their goals or basically improve over the course of therapy? What types of techniques does this theory use? How is multicultural factors and diversity addressed within this theory? Um, and then wrapping it up with what is your personal reaction? You know, basically, why did you choose this theory over any of the other theories that you could have chosen for this presentation? And of course, tying in some more research. So continuing to get practice and experience with finding good research um, and basically knowing where to look for and, and how to find research that is good. And that's, you know, again, not just something that you could find on Wikipedia. And I've created a video for that, which is something that you'll be looking at for the first week. Um, and then finally, we, we have a theory application paper, which is your final. You're going to choose a movie. So this is meant to be a little bit more fun. Pick a movie and pick a character within that movie. So you could pick Deadpool, you could pick Frodo from Lord of the Rings, um, you know, pick one movie character 
And then you're going to write a paper based on the theory and based on that character, which we'll talk about a little bit more towards the end of the syllabus. Here's a breakdown of the grade, basically what you're going to be looking at to get an A, since I'm guessing most of you probably want an A. And then here is the course schedule. So for example, I talked about how we're going to have those applied case blurbs. You can see that for week six, that's the first time that we have a case blurb. And for um, the topic for that week is going to be person-centered therapy. So you would use the person-centered um, therapy approach in terms of the case blurb. You would not use Adlerian because that's not the week that we're in, or you wouldn't use behavioral because that's not the week that we're in, in terms of the applied case blurb. So you need to be, um, whatever that blurb is, you need to be looking at the week that we're in and um, using that week. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to say here? So for week one, you're going to be watching this video, of course, so an overview of the syllabus. And then for the, you need to do a discussion post online, introduce yourself to the class, and then how to find a research article is the other video that you need to look at. For week two, there's actually two lectures. I kind of broke it down in terms of counselor competence. So how do we know that we're competent therapist or how would someone else know that we're competent therapist? What types of things go into that? And then we'll be looking at ethics as well. And then from there, for the most part, um, we've just got one topic each week moving forward. Um, for the most part, I try and spread things out so that there's not too much going on within one week. But you notice that there are a couple weeks where you may have more than one thing due. For example, a discussion post and a research article. And for the purpose of this class, Sunday is the beginning of the week. So I have stuff due at the beginning of the week, primarily because it gives me more time to get grading done. So for example, week seven for midterms and then the finals week, I have basically about a week to get all grading done for everyone in the class and get it submitted to ENMU. Um, so I just wanna make sure to give myself enough time to be able to get all that done. Um, so grading, I try and get things done within one to two weeks. Um, I like to get stuff graded quickly and I know it helps you guys to you know, have a good sense of where am I at for the class? How am I doing? Do I need to be working a little bit harder or am I doing all right? Um, I don't generally tend to modify the syllabus, uh, but you know, sometimes there are situations or things where, as I mentioned earlier, I might add an additional research article or I might add something else to read, um, maybe a video to watch, that type of thing. Late work, so I'm always experimenting with this. So this semester, I'm trying something a little different. Um, I know that, you know, life happens. And so the due dates that you see up here are basically the, you know, best, best buy deadlines, if you will, with the exception of the final. So what I what do I mean by that? So say, for example, we have a discussion post due the 26th of November. If you know you're not able to get something submitted by that deadline, that's okay. You have up to seven days to actually get everything submitted for that. Once you hit the eighth day, though, that's when you will receive a zero. The one exception to this is the final. And actually, I didn't write it in here, but the final and the midterm, just because, again, as I already mentioned, I have a week to get things submitted to um, ENMU, to the school, and they don't like when I miss deadlines, such as not getting midterm um, uh, grades in uh, and not getting final grades in. You know, those are things that I need to make sure that I'm being respectful of and, and getting those submitted on time. So those are actually the two um, the two assignments that you actually do need to have submitted on time. But for anything else, say the 15th of October, if you're like, I've got a lot going on this week in my personal life, in my school life, and I need a few more days, that's okay. You can take a few more days without losing any credit, which is all laid out here. Um, you know, again, if you need a few extra days, up to seven days late with no penalty, you're good to go. But again, once you go beyond those seven days, that's when you will receive a zero. 
Um, all right, so academic integrity in terms of submitting things, make sure that you're citing where you're getting those ideas and material from. Make sure that you're not plagiarizing anything. Make sure that you're not cheating. We want to avoid those types of things because that can result in either an F or that can result in having to um, completely resubmit work. Um, so we want to stay away from and avoid those types of things. If you have any types of accommodations that you need, of course, reach out to the school, make sure that that's set up. And then if you do have accommodations, send me that letter. Some of the rest of this, I will let you guys read on your own. It's pretty straightforward. And again, I don't want to read to you. The last thing that I'll cover here is the rubric for the theories, um, the theory application paper which is your final paper. And so again, as I already mentioned, you're gonna pick a, a character from a movie and then you're going to start with identifying some information. We always wanna know, all right, who's the, the client that we're talking about? In this case, it's a therapy client. And so, you know, some movies, maybe you don't get a whole lot of information. So for example, I talked about Deadpool earlier. You know, I can't remember from the movie if he says how old he is, um, but you're going to want to introduce him and you might have to make some information up or kind of be a little, you know, creative. So, for example, I might say something like Deadpool is a Caucasian male who's, I don't know, 32 years old. Um, he's single. He's living with, uh, you know, a friend. His occupation is, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then you're going to um describe a little bit of the history of what's going on so you know you might cover a little bit of Deadpool's history um you know what has led to him being emotionally uh you know going through all the things that he's going through this emotional distress behavioral issues whatever is going on for your character um and then you're going to break things down in terms of right because in terms of Again, continuing to kind of pretend that this is a therapy client. What is the person's problem? What led to that problem? You know, did something happen? Did a breakup happen? Is there some type of, um, you know, say alcoholism or drug abuse? So basically, um, what, you know, is there something in that person's background that led to this happening? Um, sorry, I'm, I'm mixing up predisposing and precipitating. So is there something in that person's background, say childhood or genetics or something like that, that could be contributing to what they have going on right now? And then precipitating factors is, was there a recent breakup? Is there some type of drug use going on? Is there something that basically triggered this problem occurring now? And then perpetuating is what's keeping that problem going. So for example, drug abuse, if you're continuing to use drugs, then that's probably continuing to result in other problems like say maybe legal issues being arrested, um, you know, conflicts with family members, that type of thing. And then protective factors, we always want to be thinking about for our clients, what types of strengths do they have going on? What types of things are protecting them from kind of whatever the problems are that they're experiencing? Say, if they have healthy relationships with family members or coworkers or friends, um, individuals that are supporting them through whatever the tough time is that they're experiencing. Um, and then from there, we're going to create a treatment plan which basically, again, incorporates that theory that you've been looking at in terms of, you know, what would be this theory's approach, say, for example, cognitive behavioral therapy, what types of um, plan would you come up using cognitive behavioral therapy and incorporating what is the client's goals in terms of working on things for treatment. And then you're going to basically apply that theory. So you're you're going to describe it, go into a little detail. And what I want to see here is that um, show me that you understand the theory, that you know how it works, that you un know what it means to apply this theory in this, you know, kind of fake course or, um, to this fake client. Um, and then talk about what types of interventions or techniques would you actually use with this client. So for example, you know, Deadpool, maybe some mindfulness would help him. So I'm going to do some mindfulness as part of treating him in therapy. And then lastly, you've got APA formatting um, and, you know, make sure that you're 
doing things in line with APA formatting. Make sure that you have a cover page. The paper should be six to eight pages, roughly somewhere in that range. Um, if it is short, you will lose points there, um, but you've kind of got a range to be within there. And then let me back up a little bit here. So you do, again, you're seeing research. Um, and make sure that you're incorporating at least one research article to continue to get practice with that. And that is the syllabus. So please reach out if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Thank you.